Hello, welcome to students. Mr. Lawrence here with a special video for you. Sorry for the delay at the beginning. I wasn't sure if it was recording. It is 3.35 in the morning. I went to bed early last night and got up even earlier in the morning to make this special video just for you. Hey, I just finished grading your quizzes not too long ago. Um, and, you know, the scores were very mixed. Uh, there were some of you did exceptionally well. Very proud of you. Um, there were some that failed. And the failed people who failed fell into two groups. There were people who didn't choose to prepare and the people that didn't prepare in a good manner. The people that didn't choose to prepare, there's really not much I can do. If you're not going to prepare, if you're not going to do your best, there, there's nothing I can do for you. You're going to get poor grades. There's not going to be a bunch of extra credit to bail you out at the end. It doesn't work that way. Okay? You need to do your best all the time. You know who you are. I mean, one of you came in expecting to fail because you said something like, did everybody do bad? You know, like, as if it was okay for you to not prepare. Um, please, do your best. Now, those of you that did prepare, but still didn't do very well, you need to take on some different roles. You need to, like, one, if there's definitions, make flashcards, study them, practice them. You need to make sure you're coming for help. When you come for help, you need to ask questions. Don't just wait for me to tell you everything. Tell me what it is you don't know so that you can get the help. If you're not getting enough help at the after-school sessions because they have been kind of crowded, then come in at lunch. Let me know when you want to come in. I will help you. Lunch tends to be smaller, and I will give you a little bit of extra help, and it might be what you need. All right. So, anyway, let's go back to our lesson here. Area, the space inside of a two-dimensional object. I know some of you are having a hard time with this, but this is an area. It's almost like this is the base of the polygon, and this is the height. And more specifically, it's a rectangle. Okay? Now, this is not difficult to do, so model what I am doing. I need to draw how long the base is. Well, I'm going to draw my base that long. But I'm going to break it up into two pieces. Why two pieces? Because there's an X and a Y. And so I'm going to put a little mark there. This is going to be the X piece of it. That's going to be the Y piece of it. Together, the length is X plus Y units long. This piece plus that piece. Now, I need to draw the other side, the height. And... It's going to be an x plus 5, so I'm going to need a piece that's x units long. Oops, wrong one, sorry. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. And I'm going to put a little mark there. Why am I doing that? Because if it's x by x, it's going to be a square. And then I'm going to extend it 5 units. Now, what's 5 units? It's up to me. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to try to not make it the same as uh, the Y, okay, just for a visual. Now I'm going to complete my rectangle. I'm going to put the bottom here, close that, and then I need segments where I put those little marks, okay. So, there it is. Now all I'm going to do is find the area of each piece of the rectangle, each square or rectangle inside, and then I'll be able to add them together. So what's the area of this one? Well, x times x is x squared, right? Because 3 times 3 is 3 squared, or 3 to the second power, or 7 times 7 is 7 squared. So x times x is x squared. Okay, this piece right here, x times y xy. This one here, 5 times x is 5x, and this one here is 5y. Now that I have all the areas of those smaller squares and rectangles, I just add them together. x squared plus xy plus 5x plus 5y. And there you go. That is the product of multiplying x plus y, the quantity of x plus y, times the quantity of x plus 5. There it is. It's pretty simple. 
Now, some of you might notice, hey, that there's, you know, common things. Maybe use the distributed property. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. All right, let's try it on one that's a little bit longer. Quantity of P plus Q times the quantity of Y plus Z plus 1. Now, it's longer, but it is not more difficult. I need a P plus Q segment, so I'm going to draw that. And I'm going to put a little mark here. And I'll make that the P segment, part of the segment, and that'll be the Q. So this segment is P plus Q units long. Now I need another segment. I need a Y plus Z plus 1 segment. So I'm just going to draw a nice segment here. And I'm going to call this part Y. I'm going to call this part Z and this part 1. And now all I do is finish the rectangle. There we go. All right. So, let's find the area of each piece. Well, y times p, py. Now, you might have said yp, and it wouldn't be wrong. We tend to write things alphabetically. It makes it a little bit easier. y times q, qy. p times c, pz. Q times Z, QZ. P times 1, that's a hard one. Q times 1, that's another difficult one. So I have PY plus PZ plus P plus QY plus QZ plus Q. That's it. Okay? Now, one thing I want to point out to you, you see how these all have P's in them? I could have thought about this from the beginning as P times the quantity of Y plus Z plus 1. Right? See that? Because there's a P here, a P here, and a P here. Then if I did that, I would have to add it to this one, which would be Q times the quantity of Y plus Z plus 1. Yeah, because it's like 1Q there and 1P there. And then I would just distribute. When I distribute the P, I get PY plus PZ plus P. And then distributing the Q will get me QY plus QZ plus Q. Notice I get the same answer. So what I'm saying is right off the bat you could have rewrote this as P times the quantity of Y plus Z plus 1 plus Q times the quantity of Y plus Z plus 1. That's all I did was break this up into two distribution problems. All right. I was going to do that here, but I've already done it. Try it here. Pause the video and see if you can do it. Break it up into two uh, distribution problems and then see what I get. All right? So if you're watching, I'm assuming you've already tried it on your own. Did you hear that, Bailey? You needed to try that on your own. I'm going to do x times x plus 5 plus y times x plus 5. And now I'm going to distribute. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. y times x is xy. And y times 5 is 5y. And there you go. Pretty simple stuff. All right, that's it for today's video. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.